on this episode of Patriot Games. The Patriot Campus R&D trip is coming to an end. This is the backside of Gunshot Creek, boys, so we're just going to drop down into here. But not before the treacherous old telegraph track takes its toll on Chase. Bobby. Am I going to hit on that side, Chase? Am I will straight now? How's that straight? My wheel line it's out. Jamie. We're going to go to that one on the left behind that big one. Half turn out once you've done the shackle. All right, it's on you now. And Justin. I do not want to see that hook come through the front window. Don't know how I'll explain that one to Sarah. That's it. Come to me. Go the winch. Sheet metal was my livelihood, but I never thought I'd be building gear like this. Every week, we turn tons of steel into rolling works of art. Some of the toughest gear in the world comes out of this factory. Building this gear is only half the fun. No one tests like we do. That's it, mate. Dude, I've got it. My passion has taken my family to the edges of the earth. Watch the game. We know how to play it. Patriot game. Now, there was definitely a mixture of emotions heading onto the southern end, crossing back over the development road and getting onto the old telegraph track. Now, we were doing it from north to south which was a completely different way than the majority of people do it. I could hear by Bobby's tone on the radio, he was genuinely concerned. He was not looking forward to this part of the trip. His Land Cruiser, it's only a couple of months old and it doesn't have the gear on it yet. None of the four wheel drive manufacturers have actually produced any gear for the 2016 Land Cruiser before we took off on the trip. Now I could also sense in Tommy's voice, he was a little bit anxious. Just don't leave me guys. I don't know why everyone thinks, oh yeah, let's leave Tom behind. I thought I was lost for a minute there. I thought I was sleeping in the middle of nowhere. Keep in mind, this guy only started four wheel driving nine or 10 days ago. So this was gonna be a big challenge for him. And for Chase and Jamie in the Hilux, well look, towing a 700 kilo trailer, and having that sort of experience, and Chase's willingness to commit to any obstacle that he can hit, they were gonna be fine. Just got me through, eh? Okay, come down and take it easy when you get the car on. All right, Roger. The first obstacle that we come up on was an old timber bridge. Now, because I'm rolling that sort of weight, again, sitting in about six tonne, I was a little bit concerned going over that as well. I had to keep on the main log bearers. OK, left tire is the important one. Yeah, just remember the, the trailer's about a tire width wider than the car, so keep the front of the car on the inside of that log, yeah? As soon as you get the car on board, then we'll have to worry about the trailer. Justin's dad, Rob, guides him into the narrow, rickety bridge. It's nerve-wracking because if the trailer slips off, it could spell the end of the trip. It's coming. Hold it there. Luckily enough for me, Dad was out the front telling me where to place the tyres and we got over no dramas and all the rest of the boys followed. You got me, Bobby? Yeah, I got you, Jamie. I got you now. Next over is Justin's brother, Bobby, in his Land Cruiser. Chase is driving the Hilux, towing the lightest trailer of the convoy. Tommy is the least experienced of the group, but makes it over with ease. Oh, what's up, boys? A little bit of rain coming in, eh? 
Yeah, that's a bit of a change. That could make things very interesting. Slightly slippery, I'd say. Well, the sky's starting to look pretty dark. I've got a good feeling it's going to open up, the Slavi. It's like a little shack in the forest of uh, quarantine. Do not remove the mango. Yeah, I saw the shark here. Yeah. No, do not remove the mangoes, Mangs. Do not steal my mangoes. Yeah, uh, probably, probably right there. Cockatoo Creek was our first river crossing. Now, a couple of years ago when I first headed up here, I got hung up in that creek in a massive way. I really took it for granted and tried to take a line straight across. And with this whole program for this year, there was no way I was going to put myself in that situation again. I reckon that's the line through there, mate. I think we're going to get around these holes and then just punch it through the middle there, right? Eh? So we exercised a little bit of caution. We had a few of the boys watching what was going on and found a direct path right around the big holes that are in the middle of the creek. All right, boys, here we go. Keep an eye out, mate. Just keep an eye on those holes for me, all right? Yeah. Yeah? Thumbs out, we don't want to break them off if we hit one of those big holes, huh? Yeah, yeah? you know that, don't you? Yeah. Okay, put your thumbs in your steering wheel when you're full driving. And these are the things that you need to take care of. If you just slow down a little bit and actually absorb what's going on around you, you can drive through in almost anything. Yeah, Bobby, you copy there, mate? Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, that was definitely the line, mate, that I took. So I go around to the right and just sort of uh, hug those rocks. And, um, mate, that's you. Yeah, no, John, I'm just going through that um, bumpy bit now. Bobby eases his way through the crossing, following Justin's direction. It's straight at Benny, and then when you hit Benny, turn left and come up to me. Just, just call him in. So, go right here. Yep, go right there. Just sort of go straight, yep, straight on, mate. A little bit more right hand down, just around that rock. He's through, and his brother Chase is next to cross. Beautiful. You do. You still got a rear bar on. It's too real. I've only got half the power of the bigger trucks, but I've also only got a 700 kilo trailer too. So I had no dramas going through anything that they did. Heading to the telly track, I've got to be honest, I was nervous. You know, I've done a bit of four-wheel driving now, the trip had sort of eased me into it. People have spoke about the Telegraph track like it's, you know, it's like the toughest terrain. I had the mule, we had the TH470 on the back. You know, the whole time I've been babying the highlights, making sure I was getting to every destination. And uh, now the old telly track was going to be the biggest test. On the telly track, there are a number of different ways to do different obstacles. But look, we've got the rule, no chicken tracks. We weren't going to drive one of them. I'm not sure how many people have towed that sort of gear down that track, but I can tell you one thing, it definitely tested my ability as a driver. I'm sitting at about 14 metres long. I've got a six and a half metre trailer on the back. So navigating through those obstacles, seeing some of those cliffs, and with that sort of weight, if I put a wheel in the wrong spot, we're definitely going to be in trouble. Now the key to towing anything is coupling the right trailer with the right truck. And I think we had the ultimate setups. Now with me with the 79, the power and torque that that thing's making, and the 79 series having the live axles, it's really set up to carry that weight. So I knew that we wouldn't have much of a problem. Bobby in the Sahara, a standard Land Cruiser with a Patriot X1 on the back at only three metres long, he was really gonna have no drama. And for Chase, being in the Hilux, he's got half the power of the other two trucks. The perfect choice for him was obviously the X2. Now, with the X2 on the back of that Hilux, I was so impressed and constantly Chase told me the whole entire trip how he didn't even know the trailer was there. 
One of the boys who impressed me the most the entire trip, and it was really coming into play now on the Telegraph track, was Tommy. Now here again, he's in basically a standard Hilux, and he's towing the Patriot TH470. Now the 470 on its own, that's quite a light trailer. Comes in at under 700 kilos unloaded. So he's sitting about one and a half tonnes. He did have a bit of a fair load on the back, and he is pulling the longest trailer beside me. So I was really impressed with his capabilities. Now let me put something in perspective for you. Gunshot doesn't actually relate to one entry that comes out of the creek. It's Gunshot Creek. That's the location that you're at. There are multiple entries all around Gunshot. And normally if you're doing the telly track, heading north, you drop off the edge of Gunshot. And they're most of the videos that you see, but we were doing it back to front. Now when I pulled up on Gunshot, there is a chicken track that goes all the way around the top. I didn't even let the boys know we were there. I just dropped straight into it. Straight into the creek, underneath all the t-shirts hanging up, all the paraphernalia, there's carnage stapled to trees all around the entire creek. You can see just how much damage this place has done and the carnage that it's caused. I remember this place. This is, um, this is the backside of Gunshot Creek, boys. So we're just gonna drop down into here. And um, when we get around the corner, you'll see the famous Gunshot entry, eh? So who's going up it? Hey, uh, Tommy, you want to be able to go back to the office and tell everyone that you drove gunshot? Uh, yes, I do. In the mule? Uh, I've got a bit of a plan. Wait till we get around this corner, mate, and I'll fill you in. All right, I'm looking forward to that. So as you come through here, boys, have a look up on your left, and you'll see um, the real vertical entry. That's, uh, that's gunshot. So Justin had one rule on this trip, and there was no chicken tracks. So coming into Gunshot, it's a little bit surreal seeing all the body parts and stuff stuck to the trees. There it is, boys. There it is. Gunshot entry. So as we popped around the corner in the mud pit, I left enough room where I pulled up that I could get all the boys right down into the creek so they could see the cliff faces on the side. Now, I'm sure what was going through everybody's mind was, which one does Justin have in plan? Hey, Jamie, you on channel? Yeah, what's up? Mate, you remember that recovery we did over at Princess Charlotte Bay? Yeah, where I, uh, you came to rescue us and we ended up pulling you out? Yeah. Yeah, Dad, we're about to do that all over again. Do you want to come and give me a hand? I need a winch band. Sounds like a plan. We're going to pull this whole six-ton program up this bank. Let's buy some good trees. Mate, there's a cracker one right at the top. We're going to need a winch extension strap. We're going to need a tray strap. And I'm going to need you on the winch in the sea bay, mate. Roger. I'm happy to test my gear and I'm happy to push it to the limits, but I'm not stupid. The biggest entry there, absolutely impossible that we were going to winch six tonnes up there. So we picked what I thought would be the most challenging, but realistic, to get all the gear up the top. All right, we'll get that recovery kit out. What have we got? So, mate, what I reckon, um, everything's in there. You've got the pulleys the whole lot. Um, what I'm thinking is, Look, I'll hit it. I'll try and get as far up it as I can. If you want to just get to the top, I'll have the winch remote on me. Once you get to the top, we'll see how far I get up it, and then we'll plan the recovery from there, right? Yeah, done, easy. Thanks, man. Gunshot. I've seen the videos, I've seen the photos. Nothing prepares you for what it is actually really like. In typical Patriot style, we weren't going to follow the crowd. We were going up it, not down it. What's it feel like? It's not bad. It's sandy. Yeah? A few holes. Is there a bottom to it or not? Yeah, no, it's a bottom here. There's a good bottom. Good. Probably be a bit boggy at that entry, eh? Yeah, a bit of a hole here. What's that like? Not too bad. All right, so just give it. There's a bottom to it. Yeah? Yeah, should be all right. All right, mate, let's give it a go. Mate, you're gonna need a radio. Yep. A bit more, boys. Got all the winching gear, and it was on. We were into it. We were gonna run the whole program up Gunshot Creek. That's it, keep going, mate. Keep going. Stop! Stop! Jamie, you got me, mate? Yeah, what's up? All right, dude, I'll just um, get as far as I can and you take over, eh? I'll do it. A little bit of air climb. 
Because we don't want to get hot and flustered when we're doing this type of thing, do we? No. We want to stay nice and cool and relaxed. We've got lockers in, we're in low range. Yeah. First or second? Second. Here we go. First. I'll tell you what, putting that thing into first gear and launching towards that brick wall, I was a little bit nervous. Didn't really get as far as I would have hoped, mate. Uh, a little bit ambitious, though. I'll back it up a little bit. It's that, it's the toy hauler, mate. It's not the truck. Um, toy hauler's hung up on something. I'll just see if I can reverse back a bit. Weighing in at around six ton and over 10 metres long, it was never going to be easy to get the black truck and toy hauler up Palm Creek. But Justin gives it another go with a little more momentum. I'll just give it one more crack, dude, and um, if not, just grab that winch. Take it to your right. All right, mate, I got it. How's that door looking? I heard that door go crunch. No, no, it was the mirror. Yeah, I saw the mirror, but I also heard the door. Now, winching's one of those things that there's really no book for. Every situation's difficult. But what's really important is letting the guy in the truck know what's going on. He might be steering, but he's not the one that's driving the situation. The winch man is the one who's directing everything that's happening. The driver needs to have the faith that the directions you're giving him are the correct ones. All right, run her in. Safety is one very imperative thing when winching. You have to have winch blankets. This time we had them with us and there was no way we were gonna pull these trucks up without using them. Another really important thing is keep people away. Every area is dangerous. You don't know what's gonna happen. You wanna limit your liabilities. Get people in cars and get them out of the way. All right, mate, it's looking good. It's up to you now. Looking good. Push that bottom mirror out a little bit more. That's it, buddy. Well Any right hand down you can give it would be helpful. How's that trailer looking, mate? Yep, let me get down there. Yeah, the back of the truck trays on the embankment now, eh? Mate, she's all right. She's just pulling some bank with her, but the trailer's holding up well. That's it, that's you now. This was the moment out of all of the trips that I've done, all of the recoveries and pushing gear to the limit, where we loaded up absolutely everything. If something was going to break, this is the place it was going to happen. Oh, let's hold her there. Hold her there, mate. OK, put the brakes on, let a little bit of winch out, let's see how the thing sits. No, nah, it's not enough. It's too much of an angle. About halfway through the winching session, we realised that I was going in the wrong direction. So we picked another point, we disconnected everything. We're going to go to that one on the left, behind that big one. Made sure everything was nice and safe. Kept the boys in the truck the entire time. And Jamie repositioned us onto another tray. Half turn out once you've done the shackle. It's got an anchor. I do not want to see that hook come through the front window. Repeat, do not want to see the hook come through the front window. That would not be cool. I don't know how I would explain that one to Sarah. Mate, am I still doubled up on that winch? Yeah, mate. All right, it's on you now. You good? We good to run? Mate, you're moving forward, keep coming. Go the winch. Go the winch. Now, those Dyneema ropes, even though they're very small, they can handle a lot of tension and a lot of strain. When those things let go, anything that's attached to them acts like a bullet. That's it. Come to me. So I'll let the winch do some work. There you go. That's it. Yes. Oh, drive it, mate. Straight at me. Keep coming. We are out. We done gunshot. We drove gunshot with six ton. Mate, good job, dude. Well done. Thank you. Well done, mate. Good job. Awesome. Once again. Was that good or what? Give me five. What a job. Let's go check out the other side of the trailer. 
How's that tray, Jamie? That toolbox get hammered or what? Absolutely nothing got damaged. You took some paint off. Look at this, the mega plow. How is that stuff? It's like Patriot excavations. We're just carving out gunshot. Build a trailer, what about the truck? Oh, no. The 79 just got its ass handed to it. Realistically, when you're in that little cocoon and you point it up looking at the sky, you don't really know where you're at. So all you can do is trust the guy who's controlling you through it. And having Jamie as my winch man, there's no one else on that trip that would have that sort of faith in. Yes, you do have to put your car up. The 200's coming up and both of the Hiluxes. I'll spin around on winches both up. Next up, it was Bobby's turn. Now, there's been a running joke about him losing a front bar or a rear bar, and inside, I really wanted him to lose both. But I was a winch man for this one, and unfortunately, in this situation, I didn't be the one that let the team down. So, here we are at Gunshot. You got me, Bobby? Yep, ready to break my car. Yep. But one of his bars come off, that'll make my day, eh? I'm tying it off his front bar, not the hook. Sorry, dude. All right, first 2016 Sahara through Gunshot, let's go. I had a bit of a running joke from the start of the trip with Justin, pretty much came to the agreement that we're going to rip either at least my front bar, possibly my rear bar off the car, or could possibly be both. I don't think this car was made to actually do this. I was nervous and I was almost 100% sure that I was going to lose one of them that day. Once you get in the hole, get your top over to the right as much as possible. Back her up a bit. Give it the dip. Oh. We'll just winch him slow. If he looks like he's going to hit, we'll pull him back, eh? Yep, this side here. It'll pull it this way. That side there's going to drag it this way. Because you know he'll cry. There'll be like tears and everything. Straight up the wall. All right. That's it. That's it. Straight up. This way. You're good. Keep it going, help, help the winch out. That's it. Straighten up, that's it. And then all of a sudden, playing with some of the modes in the car, seeing all these lights turn on and things flicker and it starts showing me which wheel's spinning and which where the wheels are facing and technology I've never seen on a car like that before. Huh? Go where? Do you want to stand at the back and let me know as my bar rips off what it looks like? Am I going to hit on that side, Chase? Are my wheels straight now? Wait, am my wheel straight? How's that straight? My wheel alignment's out. It shows me which wheels are <laughs> Come on, slow. Come on, go. Come on. Yes. Is there no damage? Woo! To see the front end of Bobby's car coming out of the mud with the bar still on there, I was upset. When the rear end came up with the bar on there, I was devastated. I was really hoping that, that we were going to be able to staple one of those to the tree. Well done, mate. Good drive. Yeah? I didn't even break it. First Sahara up gunshot, 2016 Sahara. No scratches. You owe me a carton too, by the way, dude. Get out of here. Come on, Chase, let's go. So I watched Bobby and Justin go up gunshot. And to be honest with you, there's a lot of sibling rivalry with me. I'm the youngest, so I've always been the one to kind of have to stand back. And I thought today, this is my time to shine. I'm going to get this truck further up that hill than any of the other boys. All right, give it hell, Bill. Well, here we go. And I hammered it. I put my foot straight to the floor. I thought I was going through the firewall. Stop! Your door's open on your camper, dude. What happened? Did you really, if you open the door, you get a high five? It was me, but anyway. Shh. It was just saying it. Oi! It's enough! I knew exactly what had happened and who had caused it. It was me. But who was going to tell Chase? You're all excited and it just died. All right. Take two, give it hell, Bill. You're in it, you're in it, you're in it. It was really heartbreaking to know that it was just the trailer door that stopped me from getting that runner. And once I was in there, I was stuck. All right, let's roll that winch out. 
Chase is gutted and the winches are draining power fast. So it's up to Tommy driving the black truck to get Chase up the wall. Yeah, Chase, we're running out of battery on this winch, mate. I'm going to have to reverse the car up. Just hold it there for a sec. Yep. All right, mate, so what we'll do is just reverse up, yep. keep it in low range. You'll have to give it a little bit. Don't ride the clutch in this thing. It doesn't like it, yeah? So just try and get the clutch out. Once you get him going, just, just roll with him. You're just reversing straight back, mate. You're just, you're taking over from the winch. All right, Chase, just um, click him into gear, mate. Start turning the tyres. Tommy, you're good. No, no, straighten up your wheels. This way. Straight, stop, stop. Stop, Tommy. Chase, you're steering this way, hard lock, full lock, constantly. You've got to be straight. That's straight. Yeah, don't steer that way. Because what you do is you, you lock it, you create a plow, and you're shoving it that way, and you're going to break a suspension. To so turn that way a little bit, a little bit more. Okay, leave it there. So you, you are steering towards me. I can't. Okay, let's get back on the winch, man. That's, that's not working. The winch has powered up and cooled down. So the boys give it another shot. Bit to, bit to your left, Chase. That's it. Chase, drive it that way a touch. That way a little bit. I can't see you, Jamie. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep the trailer off the wall. The truck's good. Yeah, doggy. Woo! So I still haven't figured out who left that door open, but when I do, there's going to be some consequences. You're up, Tom. You are up. Turn it off, kill it for a minute. Let's let everything cool down for a sec. Mate, that's no comp winch. That's three big pulls. Let's, let's let the thing settle down for yeah, 15, eh? Idea. Tommy, I'm going to make you famous, dude. Mate, this is the moment. I'm going to make you famous in England. Get into gunshot. I've done a bit of sort of YouTubing about sort of gunshot and people going up it. And I thought, oh, yeah, OK, it looks pretty, pretty hardcore. When I actually drove in there, I thought, oh, no, I'm not going to make this. Give it large, mate. Do it for England. I'm doing it for England, lad. I've got a little highlight with the 470 on the back, with the Polaris on the back of that. I'm heavy, you know, and I'm thinking, I've really got to drive this thing to get it anywhere close to getting up it. Let's do it, mate. Go. God save our gracious queen. God save... That's interesting. Not a good start, Tom. Now, after Chase's little episode, I wanted to see somebody get a little bit further than Bobby. I headed over Tommy, had a bit of discussion on what to do, because I know he's not very experienced in this, gave him a few tips, and went back up. Tommy has a plan. Yep, but you'll see. All I was going through in my mind is, don't crash the mule, don't crash the mule. <laughs> I started watching his line and wondering what he's doing. That is not what we talked about. Mate, I was giving it every, I just didn't know I got caught. The wheel spun and it was over, I was sliding. Yeah, mate, hold off now, we've got a truck. So Jamie's just took the winch on. I'm sitting there in the truck and all I can see is dirt. That's the only thing I could see. And I could see little faces at the top of the gun shop. You got him, Tommy, spin those wheels a bit. A little bit less, Tommy. Tommy, turn to the left, turn towards me. Perfect, mate. Keep those wheels turning, you're doing good. Slow those wheels up a little bit, Tommy, we don't want to snap anything. I've spoke to Justin on the radio and made sure that I'm in the right gear, and he's given me a bit of advice what I'm supposed to do. Followed his instructions and we headed off. A little bit more. Come off a little bit. Yeah, Tom, go back into first gear, mate, and I've got the weight of gear, so don't worry about trying to ride that clutch up. Just get the tyres turning again, mate. OK, going. Not too much, Tommy. Let Justin do 
I don't want him to break a wheel by spinning it too hard. Perfect, Tommy, don't give it any more. Good job, mate. Think I'm free. At that point in time, I don't think I could have been in better hands. Um, the two, Justin and Jamie, I knew they had it covered on what we were doing. I'd seen them take everyone else up. We spoke to each other on the radios, and we had everything under control. Go English. Go English. Yeah, keep the wheel spinning, but just nice and easy till it grips up. And then finally, the front wheels came over. It was a sigh of relief, I've got to say. That's it, mate. You're out. You're out. You're driving. Stop. Stop. OK, go, mate. Well done, English. Yes. I'm exhausted. Mate, that was awesome. Yeah. Welcome to Gunshot. That was awesome. Telly track, good, good job, Jamie. Well done, mate. I couldn't have done it without him, eh? Oh, we got dude, it. How was that? That was a bit uh, of a team effort. Awesome. Job, buddy. Oh, 79 oh. screaming up the top, crowd cheering down the oh. bottom. Your turn of the tires, mud and shit. Ah, chaos. <laughs> mate, that was awesome. Well done. Oh, thanks, buddy. That's something you'll remember from the trip. <laughs> Boys, oh. I'm starving. Can we get a feed going? Yes, yes, and a beer. And a beer. Let's have a beer. Let's, Let's pack all this gear up. Well done, boys. Good job. So I jumped out the cab, and there's no better way to celebrate an achievement like that than neck in a tinny. Isn't that how you guys say it? So gunshot's just been conquered, and to celebrate, we need a shotgun, yeah? Everyone with the beers, cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers boys. Cheers. Well done. Cheers. Good effort, cheers. everybody. That's... So whilst we were sorting out camp, it was the twins' job to get a fire going, and they done an awesome job. They got the fire cracking, got some coals, I pulled the camp oven out. Last night of the trip, we put a couple of roasts on, and the boys sat around drinking beer, having jokes, and reminiscing of the events of the past couple of weeks. So that night, we had a big fire right at the top of Gunshot. Mate, and being able to look down at what we achieved that day, we sat around that fire and reminisced about the whole trip, about everything we've been doing. You know, celebrating our last night on the top of Gunshot, on the old Telegraph track, mate, it was good. Waking up that next morning, look, to be honest, it wasn't a good feeling. This is it, this is the last day. The trip's over, we're gonna finish it today. I was happy that we're on the telegraph track and we still had a few more obstacles to get through. Being as we conquered gunshot, I think that we are entitled to hang my dirty ass singlet up there with the rest of them. What do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah? I really wanted to spend the day soaking up the epic scenery that the Telegraph track has to offer. There were more creek crossings and there was some awesome scenery to see. New day guys, gunshot done, how's everyone feeling? I'm a little bit upset Bobby has both of his bars. I'm excited I got both of my bars. Would have been nice if they one of them get ripped off. I'd already come to terms with it on this trip, I'd be losing them, but there's still time left on the telly track. The door last night, hang on, it'll be cold. It was really good to get the Hilux flexing and get some of those wheels off the ground. As the crew finish up on the old Telegraph track, Rob reflects on just how amazing this iconic trail really is. I 
I think the title track was everything that I expected. It was really quite exciting. There was twists and bends and obstacles to go through, crossings to be done. Probably the most memorable was the landscaping. It became from this beautiful vegetation to desert, to more vegetation, to very deep river crossings. It really is a really phenomenal place. Heading off in the morning, you had that awesome morning light. It's a cameraman's dream. And the diversity of the track is out of control. You've got water crossings, tight sandy tracks, you've got waterfalls, you've got all these epic things that are just wow factors. It was just a great experience and I can't wait to go back. This trip is Tommy's first time four-wheel driving. And for this Essex native, seeing Australia with the Patriot crew was an experience he'll never forget. Being on our telegraph track was, you know, it was, it was draining. You know, every part of the journey was hard, you know, for me especially, you know, understanding what the car's gonna do, where, what line I had to take for each particular route. It was hard work, you know, and my heart, the whole time on the old telegraph track, my heart was pumping. You know, it was all just new and real for me. Me and Tommy have been spending a lot of time over the last week or so, and I've seen him tackle a few challenges just for himself. He's new to forward driving. He built the confidence to do whatever he wanted. He's gonna take some really great forward driving skills out of this trip. and everyone go through and thinking, am I going to get there? You know, that creek looks too, too big for the mule. Nothing's too big for the mule. We made it through everything. The last obstacle of the Telegraph Track was Palm Creek. And once again, I've only ever driven the Telegraph Track north. And Palm Creek wasn't really that big a deal last time I was here. I had an X1 on the back. This is about the end of the telly track, boys. Um, probably the last um, last obstacle, first obstacle for most people. Last one for us. Last one for us before we hit Bramwell. So this is uh, Palm Creek. Is it deep? No, nah, it's not deep, but the um, entry and exit's pretty cool. So will I still have my rear bar? Well, if you've got your rear bar after this, you're gonna keep it. I hope it's not on there. Find out. When I pulled up to it, I was in awe of the drop-off. Back to the rule, no chicken tracks. We're going to have to drive this thing. The telegraph track, it wasn't done with us yet. This is steep. When we rolled off the top, it was literally like being on a roller coaster. You could not see anything below. All you could see was trees up in the distance. Pretty steep, boys, huh? Yeah. How is it? Yeah. Listen to those brakes carrying on. Oh, we're touching the mirrors. And the toy hauler is grinding. And I'm hung up. When the truck started to bottom up, I felt like somebody pulled a parachute behind us. The big toy hauler got wedged in between the embankment. We weren't going anywhere. Oh yeah, she's wedged, it's shovel time. The only real plan that we could come up with was trying to winch me out forward. There are a couple of really solid trays, but we had to get a winch extension on to get around the biggest one. This was really gonna test the capabilities of the winch. After the strains from the day before, I knew that winch line was gonna be pretty worn out. This time it was really, really important that we had the blanket on because if anything was gonna happen, it was gonna happen now. Now this was day 12, we'd done a lot of this and all the boys had become experienced in it. It's awesome to see everybody wanted to jump in like a team and keep working to the final moments of this trip. Front winch is on, yeah? You got enough out? Walking tight, eh? Pretty hard. Let's just drag it over the top, eh? Now, the day before on Gunshot, when we did the last pull and we got Tommy up the top, 
I noticed the rope was in a really bad condition. In some spots of the winch rope, it was always melted through. So we took extra caution on this winching session. I knew if something was gonna give, this was the time it was gonna do it. Six tonne of truck and trailer wedged into an embankment. It was like a dead pool. Sure enough, it let go. And this is why it's really important to follow the safety procedures. The rope dropped to the ground like it was meant to, and all was good. Bobby, yep. disconnect your trailer, mate. Back the 200 up, get a strap. You're going to have to pull me out backwards. That's all we can do. Now, I wasn't going to let the last obstacle of the trip defeat me. Bobby was right behind me put a snatch trap between my trailer and the back of Bobby's Sahara, and the Sahara, it just pulled it straight out backwards. There was no load that way. With the winch rope completely severed, Bobby uses his Land Cruiser to pull the toy hauler and black truck out backwards. But Justin wasn't giving up. Now it was time for the second attempt. There was absolutely no way that I wasn't going to drive this. Do you want to go back to school and tell your mates that we took the chicken track around Palm Creek? Let's hit it. Let's hit it. That's better. Let's hit it. hit it. Let's do it again. My kids, they wouldn't have let that go for the rest of the trip, and that probably would have been the thing they remembered the most. All right, just steer me down, mate, and then when those tyres are about to hit that bank, tell me and I'll just I'll give it a hit. The only thing that was going to get us through Palm Creek was momentum, and that's exactly what we did. Yeah, that's it. Straighten up a bit. Straighten up. Come right. Come right. Come right. All I could do was plant my foot. First gear, held into it. I felt the trailer hook up again, that parachute feeling. But sure enough, with that momentum, bang, 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 we knocked out the whole embankment on both sides of Palm Creek. and we got that truck and trailer through there. Go to the 79. Go to the 79. Yes. Well done, boys. Back here. I'm second generation. My dad was a blacksmith, and I've been still my entire life. But what Justin was trying to do and how he did it, I am absolutely astounded how nothing broke. I'm so impressed. I am so proud of him. He's just built something that I don't think I was even capable of putting together. Last obstacle of the telly track done, guys. Palm Creek. That was cool. I didn't think you were going to make it through that one. Mate, I couldn't believe how easy that 200 just pulled me backwards, eh? I had pull out of a ditch mode trailer and 79 series. Well, look, we're done. Let's um, get to Bramwell. Let's have some lunch, eh? Yeah, I'm hungry now. Well, I think Laura is probably the plan for tonight, guys. What do you reckon, Tommy? Yeah, mate, hit me up with that. We'll get some tunes going, we'll get the good vibes going, and we'll just cruise on through the night. Now, rolling out of the OTT back into Bramwell Junction, what a sense of accomplishment, what a feeling. Rolling that whole 14-metre, six-tonne program and the rest of the Patriot gear down the OTT, what an achievement. The whole crew heads south to Patriot Campus HQ on the Gold Coast. And with another successful R&D trip done, it's on to the next adventure. For some, it's back to the office. But for others, things are about to get a whole lot more epic. Next time on Patriot Games. Patriot campers are taking it to the USA. But getting there won't be easy. What do you think? Let's go get our trailer. Justin picks up his new toy, a trailer of a different variety. But he ends up in some all too familiar situations. Guys, look out! And the boys get a taste of some good old fashioned American lifestyle. This is why you never ever drive off the track. Are these people serious? The blocked in. 
Yep, good park, buddy. 